specification, what we mean by that is, is adding sensors to devices. And when we do that, we allow, enable the device to be more aware of its environment. And that makes the device smarter. And in this case, we're talking about taking existing virtual reality apparatus and, and uh, enhancing it with additional sensors. It already has to have some amount of sensors to do basic things and we don't know where they are. A lot of additional sensors to it and see what we can do to, to extend the, the experience. Um, today we'll talk about what we're doing today in VR and we'll talk about a new camera offering from Intel called the Intel Resonance 400 which has a variant that is good for uh, VR. And we'll talk about in general the capabilities the Resonance team is working on to deliver new experiences for VR. <coughs> Talk a little bit more about Project Alloy, which you might have seen during VK's keynote. <coughs> Intel uh, is currently powering the whole continuum of VR products, all the way from premium, premium tether, we call premium tether systems, which is today's Oculus Vive systems, uh, all the way down to this new category we're trying to help build in the industry called mainstream tether, we call mainstream tether. And we're also trying to help build out the mobile ecosystem using projects like the Project Alloy shown here on the left, uh, which, is, which is what we call an all-in-one untethered mobile device. So we're excited to be a leader in VR technology in the industry, and we're, we're working really hard to to, uh, to deliver the technologies and capabilities we need to grow VR as an ecosystem moving forward. And the Realsense team specifically is, is focused on how do, we, how do we enhance the input processing, the input systems on VR systems to make them, to give you, give you additional value and, and usage. Now, if we look at what we're doing with VR today, uh, we typically have, we start at the left end of the or the previous slide on the untethered mobile side, we typically have smartphone VR, like the Gear VR, or a smartphone class on one uh, HMVs that, that they're really lightweight and they, they uh, typically will track you that as you, you rotate your head, they track you as you rotate your head. If you, if you move laterally, they don't typically today track you. This is what we in the industry call 3 off, three years of freedom. And this is great for an introductory experience in VR and um, is, is, is a real low-cost way to get into the market. Uh, but but um, it certainly gives you a, a good basic experience around, uh, you know, if, if you want to uh, um, see, see a basic uh, VR game, like say the, the, the roller coaster game, where it does let you look around and, and it does let you uh, do things like 360 uh, video content viewing, things like that. And as you move up the spectrum, you might have a tethered system that has maybe external apparatus that help tracks you in a certain volume, like a standing room only, like a, an Oculus system, or what they call room scale, which is like the Vive system where you have external trackers set up that, that work with your HMD to, to track you in a certain volume or even the HoloLens, which is like a single room experience. Um, we'd like to, to see if we, if we add real sense to the mix, what, what can we do with these? The other thing you, you see today is you see almost exclusive reliance on hand controllers for input, which are really great because they're low latent, they're, you have some amount of haptic because you actually can feel the button and, and you, you, have, you can be tracked wherever your hand moves. So this is, this is what we see today in the industry, and we'd like to build on that and give additional capability using, using sensors like this. Before we get into some of the applications, we'd like to review the RealSense products for people who maybe aren't, aren't as familiar. I know a lot of you are RealSense developers already, but just in case you're not, RealSense products shown here are what we call depth cameras. And what a depth camera is, it's a camera that can see color, but it can also see a distance value for each pixel. 
So what, what that lets you do is it lets you, this is the technology that lets your drone not crash into a tree. You know, this is, this is the tech that lets us, when we put our heads on, it makes us not crash into, or walk into the wall. And what what uh, the RealSense cameras are is they're a module of products right now. And on the left side, we're showing our three, three models that we sell in the market right now. And we also sell these, these fillers as bare modules, like shown here. We also sell them as developer kits, so you can get them with a the, the chassis around them with USB 3 cable and, the, the, um, uh, and, and a software SDK. So not only do we sell the modules, but we also provide a rich suite of middleware software to let you do something with this, this duct data. And some of the usages and capabilities are shown over on the right from hand tracking, face tracking, dense reconstruction of surfaces. We can use those surfaces in, in an AI kind of setting. We can track you as you move through a volume, and we can, we can recreate texture geometry, and we can also do, we also have a rich suite of capabilities in object recognition and tracking. So these are products that we have shipping in the market today. The, today we introduced the newest member of the RealSense family called the Intel RealSense 400 series. This is uh, a whole suite of, of cameras which are optimized for different segments, one of which is a wide field of view version which we think is great for VR and, and AR. The, the new, this new camera has improved distance and also improved accuracy and improved minimum distance. So the old camera was optimized for a longer range. I had to kind of be half a meter out before I could see my hand. The new one, I, I can be a normal range. So I think the, the product we're already working on, plus, plus a wide field of view version that we, we now have, uh, it makes this camera excellent for, for VR. The, the camera is also lower power, and it comes in a smaller form factor than the previous generation. And one of the unique things about our RealSense Camera 400 series is that it works outdoors and indoors. Most of the other cameras, you get them out in the sun, and, and they, they all depend on like time of flight or structured light. They depend on the active infrared being visible, where uh, this, this RealSense 400 series, we don't necessarily depend on that. So we, we can actually work outdoors very well. And indoors. And the, the other unique property to our cameras is they're very resistant to co-interference. So if you have two cameras pointing in the same at, at each other, they're not going to blind each other, or the patterns aren't going to interfere and, and jam each other. So, and, and we've seen this also with the Lighthouse. You know, some of the other cameras, uh, technologies that we play with in the lab, they they interact with the Lighthouse and they, they compete with each other a little bit. So, we think that the 400 series is a great camera for, for VR because of all these properties that you're seeing here. I'm really excited to, to finally announce this today. Uh, as, we, as we talk about Intel RealSense technology as it applies to VR, once we have the camera, uh, we think that these are the six capabilities that, that are key for us to, to explore. When we talked earlier, we talked about single room scale or standing only or room scale we are. We think now that we have uh, this, this real sense tracking capability, we like to, to talk about extending that into multi-room scale tracking. So we think the VR of the future could really benefit from not just limiting you to where you're standing or, or just moving, but we can, we can actually provide that. We think we can provide a great capability to have you wherever you walk around to your house or, or in the workplace, as, as VR moves into the B2B and into, into education and, and industry, we can, we can start offering multi-room scale tracking capability. And one of the first things you notice when you put these HVs on is that you can't see anymore. So we'd really like to offer a collision avoidance feature, not just a geometrical shop around like you see in the, the current shipping systems. We'd like to extend that to, to more of a dynamic uh, shop run system where it warns you before you bump into freeform objects or walls. So we, we consider that feature to be key for untethered VR. And we'd like to look at you know, can we can we offer a more natural interaction mode in addition to the hand controller? Can we 
let you interact with the scene using your hands directly. And you, you think this is key for natural user interfaces, virtual interfaces of the future, because the controller is, is great for haptics, but it's just not, it's not as rich and it's not as natural as, as we could be. So we think that VR systems of the future will all feature some kind of natural interaction capability. Uh, we think that uh, RealSense does a really good job in the, the content authoring department, even in scanning objects or scenes, and use this either uh, as content authoring or we can use this as, as, as a way to teleport the content from, from one place to the next. And we can use this for multi-user interaction and collaboration. We think this is a really key usage, where we can create even we could create a, a virtual holodeck and transport people around. So you can have people that are in different physical spaces, but they're in the same virtual space together. And in real sense, really can help do that. And we can once we have all this sensing capability, we can sense the environment outside of the VR headset. We can start talking about non-optical paths through AR and, and mixed reality types of usages. The big advantage of this is VR displays are they are they're very wide field of view compared to optical passage displays in there. But also that you can you can actually block, you can composite things together and, and block things in the real environment. Where with optical displays you can't do that. You just have color mixing that happens where you mix the ambient color of the scene with what I'm, I'm, I have on my display and you have to they have to you have to overpower the background with your light from your, your display. Or with with a VR display, you don't have to worry about that. You can you can composite things together exactly how you want for the user. So I think that VR extending forward in the future is going to be a key set of hardware to, to explore new mixed reality types of usages. And we see we see real sense technologies being a key for all these capabilities. So we're, we're going to go into depth on a couple of these key usages and capabilities. The first one is we're calling multi-room scale movement and tracking. This is where I'm tracking the pose and the position of the HMV itself in the room. And what, we, what we're working on supplying to you is what we call six degrees of freedom tracking, which is the, the rotation, the three, three axes of rotation and the three axes of, of translation. So the full, full pose of, your, of you in 3D space. And we do this via technology called visual inertial odometry and depth. And this is this is a capability that that provides real world scale measurement. So in real real world units, you see where you are in the in the room. It initializes very fast, and it works with no prior knowledge of the environment. And we, we can also record as we go, we can learn the area and record it and save it. And if we reload that, that data set later on, we can immediately relocalize and move back into that, to that area. So th this, this is what some industry might call inside-out tracking, whereas with external apparatus like Vive or Oculus, you, you might call that outside-in tracking. So, so we're, we're focused on in the real sense camp is trying to perfect this inside-out tracking capability because we think it enables this mobile VR of the future that we want, we want to see. And I have a video of this working to show you. So here on the left we see the pose and the position of the HMV as this person moves around this room. And on the upper right you're seeing the features in the scene that are being tracked. So, this person is able to move, and very precisely we can see that it, it's, it's tracking the position of this person in space. And as he moves around, you know, we, can, we can see that some features are, are very stable, some are, are rejected because they're not stable. And you can see how if there's a person walking through, I don't think we have a person walking through on the video, but it would be rejected, and we would just track the features that are stable. The, the, the inertial tracking feature 
uses visible light, as you can see here, so it not, it'll work outside just fine. We, we stick this on drones, and we want to fly the drones around, and they track really well. And this, this version here, we're perfecting this for h and applications, which means incredibly, incredibly low latency is required, and high robustness is required. We want to compete with these outside tractors. So one more level of detail down into this. Um, Intel, Intel's approach to this visual inertial odometry plus depth is to fuse the depth and the, and the inertial odometry at a very deep level. And what that lets you do is it lets you, it gives you more basic, more raw data to work with in the final solution. So we, we can actually compute the, the location and the pose easier than if we were just trying to use visual inertial odometry on its own or, or even inertial. So it, it's actually faster and easier for us to do, which lowers power and lowers computation requirements on the target device, which is good. And it, it's, our implementation is very resistant to moving displaced objects in the scene. So some of, some of the solutions that we see out there are deals with that very, very well. And the great thing about having all these inputs that we're fusing together is if we lose one input, then we, we can fall back to, we can fall back to, um, to the others. So we don't, we don't just fail. So if we have, if we're in a scene that's too dark, say for the visual inertial odometry work, the depth camera sees in the dark, so it'll still work. And the, the depth camera also working together with the, the visual inertial odometry makes it much more robust so we can actually track using move around through the entire floor, like this floor here, where the visual inertial odometry would, would drift over time. So we think our, our solution is, is a really great, great for VR. One of, the, one of the next uh, key capabilities I want to talk about is the real-world interaction. And this, this if you take a, one of our vet cameras and you just paste it on the front of an h and D, so it's seeing kind of egocentrically what you're seeing if you were looking out, we can take those, those three points and we can bring them into the simulation in various ways, either directly or indirectly, raw or, or, or processed in some manner. We can use this all, for all kinds of, of capabilities in the simulation. We could use it for collision avoidance because we can, since you know how far things are, how far these, these pixels that the depth camera is giving you, you can, you know, you can apply application level logic and you can, you can use this to, to only expose things to the user when they're, when they're close enough to be a threat to you. So like the, these three slides on the bottom is showing one way you might expose this in your application, which is you have, you have sort of things that are, that are remote in the scene, and you might not expose those at all, or you might expose those in a very subtle way, and as, as they get closer, then maybe you expose them more seemingly so that you can, can deal with that, that kind of, of, of uh, information. Or, or you can choose to do this in a minimap, or do this as a, as a geofence, or however application wants to expose that, um, which, which hopefully is, is integrated well into how your, your application is what it is. The, the, um, we, we can also utilize, since we see your hands, we can utilize your hands in, in a number of different ways. We saw BK's keynote this morning. We showed the raw point cloud, and then he, he stuck his hand into a, this a simulated x-ray scanner volume, and it, it showed that the fingers being trapped. So it's showing, showing the idea that we can use raw point cloud and we can do finger tracking on the same data. And this, this lets us do things you want to use just a raw point cloud, then it lets you do very freeform things that are unanticipated. If you want to do hand tracking, then, then we can do skeletal hand tracking and, and use that as a, either for gesture processing or you, you know, use, use joints or you use the fingertips in, in some way in the simulation. So, so we think this is a, a key thing that people are going to want to do in the VR systems in the future. And you might have seen this type of a video this morning where we have this metal lathe and we can, we can cut it if we touch it. So this is just taking raw point clouds, cloud uh, geometry and putting it into the simulation and we're just, we're just actually fitting this with a, a comet's hole. And then using that as in the physics simulation, this is just like a unity type of simulation. And the really cool thing about this is the simulation itself doesn't know anything about the input. It's not, it, like for example, it's picking up a block of wood and the original developer of this, of this demo didn't know about a block of wood, it just 
nose to do, do physics collisions with, with these convex holes in the scene. So you can easily see how we could create content and experiences that are, are, uh, allow emergent behavior and new things, new ways of interacting. I think in the demo this morning, it took a hundred dollar, the dollar bill, a lot of dollar bills, and they were cutting up the metal with the dollar bill. So we think this could open up a whole new dimension of, of interactivity that right now you, you can't get to with hand controllers. So the next capability I'd like to talk about is, is 3D scanning. And 3D scanning is where we, we can take the Wilson's camera and we can take the point cloud as we're seeing it and we can use that using a SLAM engine or some other technology to generate dense recreations of, of the topography as we, as we go. And what this lets us do is, is build out either, we can either build out like an object, we can, we can have an object that's on the floor being held and we can reveal different sides of that object to the 3D camera and the, the, the software will progressively build out this object as you reveal the different sides to it, the different facets to it. And, and when you're done, you can hit complete and it will take all that raw data that's been saving all the way along and we topologize it and generate very high quality and mesh for you. And you can texture that with the color from the depth camera. And you can send that to a 3D printer, or you can, in this case, you, you pull that into the sim could pull that into the VR simulation as a uh, as a uh, an object in the game. So one of, one of the things we've done in the lab is we've, we've been able to take just random objects, scan them in, and use them as controllers in the game. And, and actually track them. So we can pull up a plastic toy gun, if you know, whatever you want to use in the game, you can suck that into the game very easily and, and track it. Or, or if you wanted to, we have a lot of, seen a lot of chat, VR chat, telepresence applications come up and we think people are gonna wanna start pulling more of their real world into that, into that dis teledistance chat session as they go, not just see my avatar with nails, or sharing things that I have on uh, the the, uh, the software that we have also supports as, as, since we have the tracking now that can track us as we walk out to just this large area like the whole floor we can digitize all of that geometry and texture and save it and so we could pull that back into another video simulation we could use it for things like virtual tourism so if you have a camera that's that's constantly digitizing everywhere you go, you can go home and, and see where you walked, and you can see the pose of where you were standing and what, where you were facing as you as you walk through this this 3D world that you created. We can also use this for for mixed reality applications. So if you, once you have this scan in, and you know where you, we're tracking you as you move in real time. We can use this for occlusion rendering. For mixed reality, we can also use it for physics. So, if you want to, if you want to start doing mixed reality things in the world, you can decal on surfaces. You can put simulated objects, and they can physically collide with the scene in intelligent ways. And the interesting thing about the Intel approach is we we can also update th things as, as changes occur. So, if it, I get content from some other source, I can't update that. But if it's my own content, then I can. As I move around through my space, I can, I can update that and notice that as, as changes occur. I have some video of, of this. So this is in a cube environment. What you see is this, this is a Talo PC that has a real sense camera integrated in the back of it. So the camera is seen kind of a world facing, a rear facing kind of a mode. And what's happening is the user is panning this around the scene and it's, it's constructively building out the scene as it, as it goes. And as, as the camera sees more of the scene, it's gonna, it's gonna fill things more in. And as we get to some level here in the video, he's gonna texture it with the 
color contents that we're seeing in that scene. So now we're seeing the actual texture on the geometry in the scene. And then on the left side here is showing you the raw depth input. And this, this might help you because if you're like seeing like a trouble area, you can, you can see why it, maybe it's not picking up and you can move around until it gets seen. Or maybe it's just, you know, it's a specular surface and it's just not going to work well. This is another example of using this for mixed reality. So he's, he's constructively building on a mesh, and this is in actually in Unity, so it's a different environment than the last, last demo. So we're seeing this mesh, and it's tracking the real world precisely. And now we're able to use that in a physics simulation. You can throw down these, these virtual cubes, and instead of falling through the table, now they know where the table is because you, you have that. that You've reconstructed that geometry digitally, so you, you can you can have those objects interact as real scene in real ways. So we think that you know, this is on the tablet, but we think implementing this in in an HMD is going to open up a whole new world of interactivity. Along with, you know, we think couple of this with the hand interaction we showed earlier. We think we can do, take this and do amazing things with it. He's going to continue to throw blocks out, it looks like. Um, all right. So now I want to talk about Project Alloy. Uh, I know we're going to have sound. I'll wait until this, till this is done. Oh, thank you. So this is a concept rendering of the Project Alloy hardware. This was demoed at IDF this morning in BK's keynote. It even comes in whatever color the ID guy wants it to be. It's a, it's a concept runner. And a very beautiful device. So Project Alloy is, it's an all-in-one device. It's it's a category we're calling premium all-in-one mobile. It, it has a sixth generation core processor in it from Intel. And it, it's outfitted with a kitchen sink of, of sensing technologies. And it's really our playground to try to explore and, and develop all the technologies that we were been talking about this hour. The, the real sense technology in this device it gives us the inside out six stop tracking, it gives us the collision avoidance features that we talked about, and it, uh, it uh, tracks my hands as you might have seen during the, the BK keynote today. And it's really our vehicle to explore mixed reality usages. So what we're doing with Project Alloy is we're trying to see you know, what, what's the right mix of technologies and what's the right mix of weight and thermal and, and battery life to, to see what we need to do to bring these capabilities to market. So going forward, you'll see additions to this device, you'll see changes, and you'll see us partnering with the ecosystem and bring these capabilities to market. And I'm waiting for other time because I went really fast. So in summary, Intel Real Sense technology enables exciting new capabilities for VR. And we think these are what people are really going to ask for once they've digested today's virtual reality. We're, we're, we're going to want more from our VR systems. And we think that our plan is to have real sense technology ready to, to differentiate and fill that need. So please work with us to to uh, to take real sense and explore where it makes sense in VR and AR and mixed reality. And also, we, we invite you to discover the whole continuum of Intel powered products, which we're showcasing in the VR experience we're doing here on the floor, just just at the end here. We're showing enthusiasts and mainstream PCs and headsets. 
And we also have alloy, which is, I believe it's under glass in the Intel booth. And 